Hello and welcome to this edition of Reporters. Today we take you to northeastern Syria, precisely to the Kabur Valley. That's right on the border with Turkey, and that is where you were, Chris Huby, just a few weeks ago. There, you met a group of Christians who are stuck in the middle of what looks like a large battle, with, on the one hand, the Turkish army, on the other, well, the government from Damascus is making a comeback, and also jihadist groups. Can you tell us more about the situation of these Christians? Indeed, James, the situation for Christians in the northeast of Syria is very complicated and very sad. They're caught up in the middle of the battle between the Kurds and the Turkish army. Because of Operation Peace Spring, launched by Ankara in October 2019, their village is on the strategic map for the Turkish army. Obviously, there's indirect collateral damage. And at the same time, the Islamic State group is re-emerging in the Middle East, and particularly in Syria, in the northeast of Syria. There have been attacks and kidnappings, and Christians are amongst the first to be targeted. So we're going to talk some more just in a minute, but first we watch your report. You filmed it with Mathieu Delmas in northern Syria. Here it is. Hasake, November 2019. Thousands of Christians are gathering in this northeast Syrian town, 60 kilometers from the Turkish border. They have come here to bury their first Christian soldier. Saeed Abdel Hada was killed by one of the Islamist factions allied to Turkey, which launched an invasion of Syria last October. This Syrian fighter belonged to a Christian militia fighting alongside the Kurds to stop the vast military operation. Relieve me of this grief, take it away from me. Why did you have to go? Oh, my darling, I would do anything to bring you back. Born by his battalion comrades, Saeed's body is brought to the Orthodox Church to receive a final benediction. A Syrian Orthodox Archbishop Maurice Amzi struggles to contain his anger as he addresses his congregation. We are proud of him and of his family who have offered up this martyr. He protected his loved ones in this holy region of Syria. It was the tyrants, the Turkish oppressors and their allies who killed him because they wanted him off the land. In two months, more than 300,000 people in the region have been displaced and several hundred killed. This is why Saeed's father and brothers-in-arms celebrate him as a local hero. My son said to me, I don't want to end up a hostage. I would prefer to die. Christians have been persecuted here for a long time. Turkey continues to target them. Their goal is to target and wipe out the Christian areas. It took several days for the Assyrians to recover Saeed's remains, which were in enemy hands. They ended up having to pay $10,000 for their safe return. Since the US pulled out of the region, Christians have felt increasingly abandoned, and their leaders say the situation will only get worse. For the moment, resistance is our only mean of defense. Turkey is able to kill our community due to international silence. Their goal is to get rid of the people and replace them with others. Turkey is leading a policy of ethnic cleansing in northern Syria. Hoping to prevent a disaster, Christian fighters from the Syriac Military Council, or MFS, have now mobilized. After Saeed's burial, his comrades prepare to go back out on patrol. 
They want to field updates on the advances of Turkish forces and their Islamist allies. Every day the fronts are changed because of the jihadist positions. They are trying to put them on, on, the, on good positions in front of, of the enemy. This smaller group, made up of one sniper and two soldiers, is heading out on patrol. Their destination is Tal Tawil, one of the 34 Assyrian villages under threat in the Kabul region. The church here has been left relatively intact. The situation is calm for the time being. But in case there are attacks, we are here to protect the village. Fifteen kilometers away lies the village of Tal Jazir, where we meet another patrol. This fighter joined up in 2015 like many others. At the time, the Islamic State organization controlled the entire valley. Look. There is nothing left of this church. Just ruins. There is only rubble, nothing else. Two thousand Christians, men and women, are thought to have joined the MFS and coalition forces. But they couldn't convince the thousands of farmers who used to cultivate what's known as the breadbasket of Syria to stay. Before there were around six to seven thousand residents here. People lived in peace and security. But there's nobody left. They've all gone. Look at what the jihadists wrote here. Allahu Akbar. And over there, that's the impact of an explosion. The Islamic State organization abducted more than 250 Assyrians and killed many more. That was the first house to be attacked. They were the family who suffered the most here. They slit their throats. They killed the children in front of their parents. The 1,200 families who were lucky enough to escape sought refuge in the surrounding cities. This was the Islamic State base that they burned before leaving. That's where they killed the local people. This grim scene has echoes of another older episode. The soldiers find a wallet in one of the ruins. Inside are photos of a family who settled here in Syria in 1933. These Kabul Assyrians are the children of those who fled the Iraqi massacres of the time. A sad message from the past for this soldier in the context of the Turkish invasion, in which they and their allies are using the same tactics as the Islamic State organization. Turkey is just doing the same as the Islamic State group. There is nothing that differentiates them. Robberies, explosions, forced migration of people and destruction. It's the same. There is no difference between them and the Islamic State group. History is repeating itself, but it's even worse. They start with airstrikes, then come the tanks and their cannons. And then they take to the streets with heavy weapons. Their weapons are so modern, you can't compete with planes and tanks. Since the death of the young Assyrian soldier Saeed Abdelhada, a dozen MFS soldiers have been killed and three others taken hostage. Security is now being bulked up in Christian neighborhoods across Syria, with more Syrian army checkpoints. We are here like brothers, and I'm proud that we all speak Arabic. Protection has also been reinforced in the larger cities, like here in Hasake, around the school. While more than half of the Christians here fled abroad if they could afford it, there is still a significant minority left to face the new Turkish threat. There are not many Christians here. It's not like before. It's changed a lot between four years ago and today. Because the wars forced the Christians to leave, for other countries, 
Because there's no security here and life is difficult. We believe the war was finished and then it started again. It makes our children very afraid. Now they're away studying in Damascus or Aleppo and we can't bring them back here. Tal Tamer is the biggest village in the Kabul Valley. It's here that the young Christian soldier was killed. There are few people around. The pews at the church are deserted, apart from a small group of women. Among them, some were abducted in 2015 by the Islamic State group. All are terrified by the renewed violence. These women come from the Assyrian villages and all fled here. We're all afraid. There were at least a hundred women who were abducted. They were all from Christian villages. If we ever hear a gunshot, we're afraid that Daesh will return, always Daesh. The recent assassination of a priest, Joseph Hanna, and his father has also fueled fear among Syrian Christians. The two men were gunned down by unknown assailants on a motorbike on November the 11th as they visited the site of an Armenian church in Deir Ezzor. A few hours later, the double killing was claimed by the Islamic State group. The 42-year-old Armenian Catholic priest left behind a wife and three children. We'd been to Deir Azor several times without anything happening to us. We went there often with no danger. Joseph's death was unimaginable. He was such a peaceful person. The Armenian Catholic Archbishop of Kamishli took down the last words of the martyred priest. He says the fate of Syria's Christians now lies in the hands of the Western world. We're being targeted for certain. We're being targeted by everyone. The West was expected to have a positive stance towards Christians in the region. But alas, alas, we feel forgotten by the Western world. One week later, Sunday Mass is being dedicated to the memory of Father Joseph. As the community closes ranks, it's also thinning out by the day. We did have hope for Syria, but unfortunately, chaos still reigns. Since the death of Father Joseph, there have been three car bomb attacks in Kamishli one of which targeted a convent of Armenian Catholic nuns. Attacks that were promptly claimed by the Islamic State organization. Chris Huby, who filmed this report, is with us in the studio to tell us a little bit more. Now, Chris, um, in that report, we see all the villages are empty. Where are the members of this Christian community? Actually, the villages have been deserted since 2015. In fact, that year, the Islamic State group went into the Assyrian villages, carrying out kidnappings and massacres. The people left for the big Syrian cities, a journey that started in Taltamar, the biggest village, then over to Hasake, Kamishli, and finally to Damascus and Aleppo. For those with more money and lucky enough to get abroad, they've headed to Europe, mainly to Sweden, France, and Germany. And for those who have even more money, well, they're in Chicago. There's a large Assyrian community who've been there for a century, when they left because of the Ottoman genocide. And, surprisingly, in Australia, there is a small town called Fairfield near Sydney, where there are around 40,000 Assyrians. It's surprising, but that's the case there. Often we've heard since the beginning of this conflict that uh, the, the Christian communities across Syria were backing uh, Bashar al-Assad's regime in Damascus. Is that true with these Assyrians from this valley? 
The word ambiguity is often used when talking about Syrian Christians and their relationship with Damascus. In fact, the Christians who are still there today are silent. They don't speak out because they're taped by economic problems. As soon as you talk about politics, whether it's about Assad or the Kurds, they don't respond. Those who have chosen to stay are fighting for peace in Syria. So what does that mean? Today, we don't really know because the situation in northeast Syria is ongoing. So ambiguity? No. Divisions? Yes. And as you can see in the following interview, well, this soldier has a very hard time talking about it. Know what he wants from from the from the regime, but uh, he doesn't know what he wants from us. He always try to 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 back the area, the security uh, forces for him. Uh, this is what we this is what we refuse. We are not refusing the, the Syrian flag because we are Syrians at the last. I'm Syriac Syrian. Uh, my, my brother is Kurdish Syrian. My other brother is Armenian Syrian. Uh, we can't deny our our nationality, uh, and we are so proud of ourselves. Now, Chris, the Western powers are supposed to have left the area. What are they doing for these Christian communities? It's an important question, because despite the fact that 2,000 Christians were in the coalition, fought alongside Western forces against the Islamic State group, well, these Western powers, they've left a few months ago after Trump's decision. And we don't have any news. We don't know what's happening. So like the Kurds, Christians have been abandoned in the same way. But you have seen American soldiers and foreign powers there. Yes, and it's paradoxical because they're supposed to have left, but there are still American tanks operating there. In the last few days, they went to the village of Taltamar to position themselves against the likely arrival of the Russians and the Syrian army in the region. So they haven't completely left. Thank you very much, Chris Huby. Thank you for watching. You can watch this episode of Reporters again on internet, of course, and stay tuned to France 24.